to your pastor. Yes, sir. By saints, do you mean like Jesus' disciples or like Catholic saints? Uh, saints is not a, uh, uh, it's not a Catholic word. It's a biblical word. So don't be intimidated to use that word. It is in Scripture. The saints also refer to us, right? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Can yes, sir. Can we go on to the next question? Yes, yes, we can. <laughs> All right, John, you got five minutes, so if you want to hit oh. one last question. Okay. All right, I'll tell you we'll what. Have, I, we'll have you back. I'm sorry. I got like ten more questions. I just, I wanted to show y'all the uh, the due diligence you, that you deserved. I have. A couple I have, and y'all pick, then how about this? So, here's the first one. Where did the angels come from? What day of creation were the angels created? What happened when there were no people, only void? What did God do during that time? Um, why do Catholics pray to Mary? Um, where did Jesus go during the three days after his crucifixion? Um, are there dinosaurs in the Bible? What is my biblical, or uh, dinosaurs in the, in the book of or the Garden of Eden? What's my biblical view of tattoos? If God said marriage, tattoos. All right, hold on. It's probably going to win, but this will be running by you. If God said marriage was between one man and one woman, why did He allow so many people to have multiple wives? Uh, I, I smoke. I smoke that one. Yeah. I ain't even worried about it. Um, since there is no new, since there's a new covenant, what, do we have to abide by Old Testament laws? Um, does the, what does the eagle, the lion, the ox, the eagle, the man represent in Revelation? How do you prove your faith with science? The tattoos. Okay. All the old. Alright, the tattoos are wrong, okay? Alright, here we go. Alright. Here we go. Alright, what is the biblical view of tattoos? Why am I surprised young folks want this question answered? Well, maybe maybe we should answer it then. And I, I try not to bring such a serious demeanor. Okay, so forgive me if I was a little uptight at first. Next time I'll probably be nicer, okay? I am a nice guy, I promise you. All right? So, what is the biblical view of tattoos? Okay, first scripture we will look is at Leviticus 19, 28. And you shall not make any cuts in your body for the dead, nor make any tattoo marks on yourself. I am Yahweh. At first glance, it sounds like you can't get a tattoo. But like all things, context is king. Here's an example of context. Like Jesus saying, if your hand or eye cause you to sin, Matthew 18, you're to cut it off. He isn't commanding hacking off limbs. But to separate yourself from what causes you to stumble, what causes you to fall. So young men, if your cell phone is causing you to do things and look at things you shouldn't do, maybe you should put your cell phones away. Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Okay. The, hist the historical reality, tattoos were given to slaves. For So for this reason, God wanted to show Israel was no longer into forced slavery. They are owned by God, not evil men. Forced slavery is punishable by death. So people were very tribal. Also, people were very tribal. Tattoos were a way to identify what tribe people were a part of. Again, Israel was to be different. You are in the tribe owned by God. Point two, there were unclean practices which were happening all around Israel. One was blood was taken from the dead and was tattooed in the skin of someone. So when you reread the verse, you shall not make any cuts in your body from the dead, nor make any tattoo marks on yourself, I am Yahweh, you're starting to understand this verse a little clearer. What about tattoos which honor God? There is a passage in Isaiah which suggests this, Isaiah 44, 5. This one will say, I am Yahweh, and this 
one will call on the name of Jacob, and this one will write on his hand, belonging to Yahweh, and will name Israel's name with honor. Then there is Jesus himself, which we read in Revelation 19, 16. And he has on his garment and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I would also like to note in Ezekiel 16, 12, God describes his bride Israel in terms of beauty as her having a nose ring through her nostrils. This isn't something we see commonly here today, but apparently the creator of the universe finds it more than appropriate. The truth is the Bible is about internal reform. Internal reform. Changing the heart of stone to a heart of flesh. Become a new creation in Christ. Being washed by his blood, made clean. Intent is everything. As y'all know, I'm a police officer. Let me give you a scenario. Bill and Tom are throwing a football. Bill overthrows Tom. Ball hits neighbor's window and breaks. Completely accidental. There's no crime. Bill and Tom are throwing a football. Bill looks at Tom and says, hey, watch this. Aims the ball, throws it at the window. Now it's a crime. It's called criminal mischief. This analogy correlates with the original question in this way. Why are you getting a tattoo? Why are you getting a tattoo? Are you getting it to show off? Are you getting it because you want to draw attention to yourself? Are you, getting, are you more focused on your appearance to look like a follower and not focus on the inside, that being a lukewarm Christian, which Jesus will spit you out? Are you getting it to honor God? We all face the King of Kings one day, and unlike a courtroom full of people, we will be in front of the Holy God. There is no fooling him. It's not going to happen. So in conclusion, we see intent is everything. <laughs> Tattoos should be approved by God in a sense, nothing lewd, nothing demonic, nothing to separate you from other people. Inner beauty is what's most important. I don't see any issues with tattoos. Just remember your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity who dwells in you. So if your whole intent is to give tattoos because you want to look cool, or you want to bring your attention to yourself, there's a problem inside that needs to be fixed. If you're wanting your whole body covered in tattoos because you're broken inside, you're not turning to the Holy Spirit for guidance, you're not turning to the Holy Spirit for um, making yourself feel better through your life, guidance and wisdom, and you're turning to tattoos or outer appearance, and that's called idolatry. Anything you replace God with is called idolatry. So if you already get a tattoo, you have to make sure your heart's in the right place with it. That's what, we didn't go into this next question, but that's what the, about the, the old covenant, and it's all about internal reform. So if you want a tattoo, I don't see any biblical grounds not to have one, but it has to be for the correct reason. Does that answer it? You don't have any questions on it? Yes, sir. So what about Maui from the Disney movie? <laughs> okay, no, actually that's a very good question. So in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts, which we didn't get to go over this question, in the book of Acts, the barbarians and all these other people start converting to Christianity. And then they have a big um, debate in Acts 15 about if the, if, the, if the Gentiles, which everyone in this room is a Gentile, I believe. I don't believe there's any ethnic Jews in here. We're going to be circumcised or not. And then they said that they didn't have to be. James made the decision. It wasn't Peter. That's for another topic. Um, James made the decision. And he just said they didn't have to be circumcised. And that they, didn't, they couldn't do like any blood rituals and things like that. These, these people had all types of tattoos that went with their culture. So they weren't commanded not to, not to stop doing their cultural things. Here's another example. Um, in, the, in 1 Corinthians, Paul's first church, it tells the women to keep their heads covered. The reason why is because there was a, a temple down the road from the church of Corinth where women would shave their heads and all the sailors and merchants would pull into the, into the city of Corinth and they would all be waiting on these lonely men to pull in. And they would walk around with shaved heads and they wore uh, sandals where you, you literally arrows so you could follow them. And they went to people's houses evangelizing them with uh, 
unholy practices. But these women had shaved their heads their whole life. So Paul said for them to keep their heads covered. But it wasn't because to suppress women or to um, you know, single them out. It's because when these merchants pulled into the city of Corinth, they would see this new church, this new Messianic church, this new Christian church. They would worship this, this carpenter from Nazareth. And they'd be like, well, look, they got those bald-headed women that are running around with uh, the, the, the Venus. They're no different than that. So Paul instructed them to keep their heads covered. But he didn't tell them they couldn't shave anymore. He just wanted that the new, this new port where people from all around the world came. It was very smart by Paul. This new port where all these people came. And they saw this new Christian cult. He wanted to be, for that church to be separated from the, the, the known pagan practices. So that's why. So you can see how you can kind of tie that in with your tattoo question. You see what I'm getting at? If it's part of your culture, and it's part of something you've done like that your entire life, I don't, I don't see how there's any biblical grounds against it. But then again, once you do get out of the bar barbarianism, then it's all about being a warrior within for God. So those people who had the tattoos at first, maybe they would still practice, have some of those practices down to their kids, but as their Christianity grew into that family, I could see it weeding out in those practices. Because now that family is more focused on the internal growth through Christ. You get me? Yes, ma'am. Why did the Christian women shave their heads? Why did they shave their head? They still shaved them because of that, because they, were, they grew up that way. Oh. It was just part of their culture. But Paul wanted, but Paul, good question, but Paul wanted them uh, just to have their heads covered so people wouldn't confuse because remember, this, like, like I said, this was a port where all these people came from all around the world, brand new people. And there's this new messianic Christian cult when people, you know, they worship a dead carpenter. And Paul wanted the church separate. This is one of the first churches. This is Paul's baby, as Pastor Miller brought him in service a couple weeks ago. This was, his, this was his thing. So he didn't want people confusing the practices of the Venus cults and these pagans with the, the new Christian movement that was moving. And these women shaved their heads their whole life, so they just continued to shave their heads. But Paul didn't say, don't shave your head anymore. He just said, just have a cover in your church so it doesn't bring confusion. Does that make sense? Sorry. I got, no. I got too, too long-winded. I didn't get to answer all the questions. I'm sorry. I was going to ask you uh, to, to thank John and uh, man, he put lots of time into these questions and we didn't get to maybe half of them tonight. So uh, definitely going to have to have him back and uh, just end on the note that I think we should bring back women shaving their heads in the church. Uh, I think that's what, I think that's what he was saying. No? All right. Uh, so, hey, appreciate my brother being here. One question that did not get asked and I'm going to put him on the spot. John, how much do you bench press? How much? 470, 350. 470, 350. 350. <laughs> <laughs> Who said 350? Dave. All right, that's a, that's a headlock coming. So my, my, my best uh, in contest uh, bench press in a meet is 519. Oh. Oh, I, I did 500. I, I knew it was over 500 pounds, so I had to ask you a question. I'm the, uh, I'm the, I'm the USPA uh, drug tested uh, master's national record holder. Whoa! Big squat and deadlift total. There you go. Thank you. And I, and I, got, a, uh, I got a pro show in October. Y'all pray for me. Yeah. What's, what's your max deadlift? Uh, my deadlift's not very good. 655 in a meet. But I've gotten close to 700 in a, in a contest. That's not that good. My, I'm a better squatter. My squat's uh, 729. Oh my. All right, so I thought, I thought those would be numbers. Some of you guys especially would appreciate it. Hey, uh, what I do? I'm, I'm about 900 uh, on the squat. <laughs> All right, hey, 
Uh, thank you guys for being attentive, and again, uh, thank John for coming, and we're going to have him come back. Yeah. All right, let me pray for us and get us out of here. Do Lord, we thank you for who you are. Uh, do Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to get answers to questions based on your word. Do Lord, as we've been talking about since the spring, that your word is our source for truth. And so I just thank you for this opportunity for us to hear truth spoken from your word. Do Lord, my prayer is also that we would be Bereans, that we would uh, go and uh, investigate these things on our own, to look to your word, that we would be spending time in your word daily. Dear Lord, I thank you for this group of young people. I ask uh, that you watch over and protect them, uh, bless them as they go out from here. Uh, dear Lord, as John goes uh, back into his role as a police officer, that you watch over and protect him, that uh, you'll be with his wife uh, as they've got a new baby on the way within just a few weeks, that uh, you would bring uh, help there, and that you would be with him as uh, he prepares for this meet that he just mentioned in October, to know that he would continue to do everything that he does to bring glory to you. We just thank you again for what a good God you are, and it's in the holy and precious name of your son Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Don't forget your phone. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, buddy. Sorry, I didn't think all of them. I'm sorry. I love your enthusiasm. I love your enthusiasm. You're very smart. Go to your phone. I'm going to go ahead.